And here, in the context of the interview we're going to do next, is a very interesting text. Sean, you drop out seven times on my almost daily commute from Whangarei Heads to the council building. Couldn't care less. It's still better than Hosking. That's uh, from Jane Go Lightly, who was a Whangarei District Council councillor. And Whangarei District Council, very much at the part, uh, at the centre of our next story. It is a story that has gone on, I think, since 2004. And it involves an individual, a businessman, getting caught in a web of bureaucracy, which now sees him in a position to put up the land on which the Whangarei District Council's headquarters, called Forum North, sits. He is putting that land up for sale or intends to to recover a $6.1 million debt that the court has said he is owed by the Whangarei District Council. It is an amazing story, and the man at the centre of it all, Jimmy Daisley, joins us on the phone now. Jimmy, welcome to the platform. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning, John. All right, Jimmy, this all goes back. You bought a quarry, right? That is correct. I, I brought a quarry at, the, at a place called Ruatongana, sort of west of Wangarei, uh, to increase the business. I needed... Um, I've been looking for one for a while, and I wanted to um, make it so that I could get metal... Um, aggregate when I wanted to. Yep. Um, the big corporates close at 4 and 4.30. So yeah, and you're in roading, hey, Jimmy? Expand my business. Yeah, so What's Jimmy, you buy it. You're in, you're in roading and, and construction? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, just general contracting and yeah. roading and, you know, working for farmers and, and the council itself did a lot yeah. of work for the council. So, Jimmy, the you buy the quarry and it's an operating quarry when you buy it and then pretty soon afterwards... The Whangarei District Council says you're not allowed to take the stuff, the aggregate, out of that quarry. There's no resource consent, right? That is correct. But there, there was yes, a resource. There was, there was a resource consent, right? Yes, there was a resource consent, and uh, they tried to blame me for not finding it in their files. Um, but they wouldn't. <laughs> they wouldn't produce it. So I was sort of stuck between the rock and the hard place. Uh, like, Excuse the pun, but basically <laughs> what I had with that quarry, with that quarry was I had, you have a land use rate, which you have with your house, and yeah. everyone in New Zealand has, and I had a mineral extraction rate. And this mineral extraction rate, I assume when you pay it to the council, they pay it to the government under some, you know, under their uh, energy resource or something like that. I don't know exactly what, but it is quotable value in New Zealand. They, they value it and you pay a... Right, so I had my mineral extraction rate on my yep. title, and it was a separate rate, and that was the commercial quarry. Mm. All right, so Jimmy, I, I can't imagine, to be honest, anything more mind numbing than going through the rubbish you must have gone through for the past 70 years, the legal ins and outs. But essentially, uh, but essentially, what's happened is the court has said there was a there was uh, the right for you to quarry there. There was a resource consent. You have been done wrong by the Whangarei District Council. And it's passed judgment in your favour of how, for how much? Uh, the 6.1 million with all the bits and pieces. You know, there's a, some, you know, money paid for the expert witnesses and there's a bit of money paid for the lawyer's fees and things yeah. like that as well. And it comes to about 6.1 million. And an expert exponentially damaged, I can't get the word, but what it means is that their their legal team really didn't play the game and they should have, uh, the judge um, sort of said, well, I should have just admitted liability and then just concentrated, you know, concentrated on the quantum. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, they stubbornly, and in his, in his findings, the council were stubbornly objective, uh, um, uh, um, stubbornly objective uh, attitude. You know, oh, was that, that not obnoxious? That. <laughs> Stubbornly. No, it wasn't obnoxious. <laughs> but, you know, usually to you and I, anyone who's like that is just, yeah, yeah. you know, a low point. Yeah, so, Jimmy, and the quarry is running now, the business is okay, uh, 17 years on? No, no, I lost it all, lost my house, lost everything. Oh. Um, I, what happened is um, the council lawyers, the council law firm at the time, uh, law firm Thompson & Wilson, that was in-house lawyers, they um, 
they there was a chap come along to help me because I was you know I was on the I was on the rack you know they made yeah. me go for another consent and I'd spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to get this consent I didn't need and um, and this chap comes along says look I'll help you out here Jimmy we formed a company called Art Contractors and then I never got, then they didn't give me the shares now ironically enough that um, that firm. Uh, he, that jug ended up with my house, sold it to himself because he had control of the company, and the trustees um, on that on that title are Thompson and Wilson, the same lawyers that worked Jeez, with the other. Jimmy. So, Jimmy, you lost a lot, really, in the last 17 years because a council couldn't find a resource consent that had granted in its own records. Uh, that's correct. I, I find that difficult to believe, actually. Um, the judge said they were reckless, I think is the word mm. he used. But um, ironically, in the court case, um, the, they had a witness there, and the lady said you can find any record. usually takes about half an hour. They have a record department. And the judge said, well, that, that sort of runs in line with yeah. um, the office girl um, yeah. that found it originally for me. It was 40 minutes. Yeah. So how they couldn't find it in five years. Yeah. Um, uh, Jane I, I, Go Lightly from the Wanganui District Council says, I was the only one who voted no to take him to appeal, taking you to appeal. Jimmy, the problem you have struck is a problem that, that I know many people have experienced, though in your case your story is so extreme. Who was it at the council that would not talk to you? Because what happens when you, when you fight an organisation in court because the person making the decisions, you know, the town clerk or someone else, it's not their money. They are completely reckless about their approach to litigation and to how much they spend on lawyers because they're spending someone else's money. So their decisions are not ameliorated or moderated by financial constraints or reality and they can just throw other people's money at you in a courtroom battle forever. So you were really up against it, Jimmy. Was there an individual in the council or was there a culture within the council that put you through this hell and now, to be frank, won't pay you the flipping money they owe you? Uh, oh, there definitely is a culture. I obviously upset someone in there. Um, as you know, all the blokes seem to be more thin skin these days. So I must have said something to someone that upset them. Um, but I did have a letter from uh, Stuart Henderson um, over a bit of previous, um, over a, a piece of land, and I opposed a, a, a cattery on it and a doggery thing, and and um, he just said to me, he sent me a letter saying that anything I do, I will use the council to fight you and basically... And who was he? You. Sorry, because I'm, I'm not a local. What was his connection to the council? Um, I don't know. He was a lawyer. He's <laughs> a lawyer, Stuart Henderson. Yeah, okay. And, um, but the thing was, I have to... Sean, I have to give the council one hundred percent. You know they've they've destroyed me and they've done very well and they've had a they've had a great win. Um, but you, you know, can now <laughs> sell literally the land that they sit on. A court's approved. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not quite that that simple yet. Um, I put a charging order, or the lawyer did uh, put a charging order on the property at um, Forum North because. I had a judgment. I've got a judgment for them. They owe me money. And so we put a charging order on their property. And now we have just filed for what they call a selling order. So it still has to go before the court and the court will organise to sell it. Yep. But they, they, you know, they'll be get in touch with the council and say, well, what are you going to do? You know, you got, you got a, there's obviously a process. So we've got that process in motion now. Yep, and, and Jimmy, would you be prepared, and look, I, 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 I'm not asking you to be legally li liable for this, would you be prepared, because, I mean, $6.1 million is a lot of money, um, would you be prepared to compromise on that if the council would just give you some money so you can get on with your bloody life and maybe say sorry to you? Um, no, I wouldn't compromise on the money. You know, like I think, I think to cut even, I'd need eleven million. Yeah. Um, you know, with all the properties lost and the way the property prices have gone up now, yeah. six million would buy uh, yeah. uh, you know the deposit for the section next to Russell Coots at Wongabraw. Yeah. Um, 
So, you know, it sounds a lot, but yeah, today. Well, Jimmy. <laughs> today, uh, and, uh, and, and I owe to yeah. get there a cost a fortune. Yeah, I, I get you. Now, now, Jimmy, um, the council are bleeding on, oh, we're still in negotiations with them and we might challenge this order. What a bunch of buggers, sorry. Uh. Yeah, yeah, no, they, they, and they have, they, what it is, they are negotiating with us at the moment. When I put that charging order on, yeah. um, all of a sudden they, they, they started to jump. Don't forget that judgment <laughs> came out in June or something. Yeah, yeah. And when the charging order came on, they, they, they got in touch with my lawyer pretty quickly. Uh, but before, the, 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 see, what you've got to know is the process to destroy me is to, and to get you to go away, is to drag you out. Yeah, yeah, and, and when as you, I said, you when, when your opponent isn't spending their money, they can play that game, and it's bloody hard to overcome it. I, I hear what you're saying. That, yeah, and and they they say they've got insurance and all that, but you see, they were attacking me back in 2004, and they they were they actually took me to the Environment Court. Yeah. First, then when they found the consent, they didn't stop. They still had me going oh, to the so environment. Oh, so see, that's just a thing. Jimmy, what's the, what's the feeling of locals there? Because at the end of the day, it is up to people like Ms Golightly and councillors to stop this madness, to stop the perse persecution of you, and to bite the bloody bullet and pay you the money you're owed. So what is the local feeling there? Uh, are locals saying, I don't want to pay $6.1 million to Jimmy? Or are they telling the council to pull its finger out and do the decent thing? Well, all the correspondence I've had, um, Sean, has all been positive. I mean, very positive. I had a, you know, a text this morning. Well, if you get it, Jimmy, uh, build a pub, and <laughs> uh, I'll give the I'll give the uh, council a container so they can have their meetings in it when you take it over and all this sort of stuff. And definitely, you deserve the money. Yeah, I've uh, never had anyone say no, 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 no. You know, I've never had that. Everyone has said to me, um, stick yeah, out. No, you, you know, yeah. good on you. I've had a lot, uh, heaps of support, and I think that's what's kept me going, John. What I've done is I've had a that's huge moral victory. A yeah. huge moral victory uh, um, because I was right. You know, I was right all yeah, the time. Yeah, but you can't you. live, you and, can't um, eat a moral victory, and you can't live in it. Yeah, but, well, the thing is, I, I know they're morally bankrupt. The council's morally bankrupt. Yeah, you know, they just, you, you couldn't get lower if you tried. And, um, and I've had a huge moral victory. I know you can't live on it. And luckily for me, you know, I've had my family, um, you know, owe them a fortune. How old are um, you, Jimmy? People like, what's that, sorry? How old are you? I'm 70 in a couple of weeks. Geez, you want to get it sorted out so you can kick back a little bit in your later years, though, Jimmy. This can't go on forever, mate. Yes. No, I know, they should. And, they, and of course, what they've done, they've gone for an appeal... And the appeal is on a technicality on the timeline. And another thing is two appeals, and the other one is misfeasance. And misfeasance in the public office means that you are a criminal sort of thing. You know, you're a fraudster or I don't know exact meaning. You'd have to get the legal beagles, but it, it means it's pretty bad. And, um, and, and, the, and, the, and the, the thing with the technicality, they're not appealing against anything with the case because they can't. You know, it's in black and white. Slam, you've slam slam dunked that's why my case was so good. Yeah, well, it's time. It's time for that bureaucracy to, to do something. Jimmy, I wish you well, and do keep us updated, mate. We'll keep in contact with you. Um, it's such a David and Goliath story, and it's nice to know that David, well, morally, da uh, Jimmy, David is one. Goliath's just got yep. to um, calm the farm and accept that. I thank you for your time this morning, mate, and very good luck to you. Yep. Thanks very Cheers. much. Good day. Uh, yeah, bye. Um, that's Jimmy. That's Jimmy Daisley. 18 years, sorry, he's been battling the Whangarei District Council and he's won $6.1 million, probably half of what it's cost him. It's cost him his business and his home, the whole ball of wax, because they couldn't find a resource content, a consent for a quarry that he, an aggregate quarry that he built. I know at least one member of the Whangarei District Council was, was listening. Can I just say this, in the interest of fairness, in the interest of ethics and morality, maybe you councillors need to sit down and bite the bullet on this one and stop the persecution and the madness. Yes, your bureaucracy, your system, 
your executive officers and your lawyers can continue to grind Jimmy down. But maybe you need to do what's right. Not appeal the technicalities, but get into it.